Well, hello friends. How do you like my new look? This is uh, as close as I'm going to get to uh, looking like a local here. So I thought I would wear it uh, for today's video where I will be sharing some tips with you guys of how to stay safe if you are thinking of traveling to Colombia. If you have been following my travels here in Colombia, you will know that the majority of my time here I have thoroughly enjoyed, uh, but I did have something very scary happen where I was almost robbed and shot at. Unfortunately, a stereotype that you can't quite leave out of the possible dangers that can happen if you travel to Colombia. You definitely need to take a lot more precautions here than you would than your average tourist destination. So I have made a list of suggestions that I think would be helpful to you guys um, to keep you safe that I have been using while I've been here, some of which uh, locals have recommended to me. Uh, and I feel like this list would be useful for not only Colombia, but many other destinations. So let's begin with number one. I'm not going in any particular order, but very important, as with any travel destination, it really helps to blend in. <laughs> of course, some people may have dead giveaways that they are, you know, not from here, that they are a tourist, but here in Colombia, you know, the way people look is actually quite diverse. So really focus on dressing, you know, the way that locals dress, don't wear anything that makes you stand out too much. Also with just, you know, the way that you're walking around, try your best to blend in with the locals. Second thing, on that same note, do not wear obvious valuables, things that look very expensive. This is not the country to be wearing an Apple watch, any kind of jewelry, especially if it's gold, uh, any kind of costume jewelry really isn't a good idea. Unfortunately, a friend of mine uh, in Cartagena uh, literally had somebody rip you know, her necklace off of her neck as she was walking around. And uh, that is apparently a common thing that can happen. And I'm not trying to say these things to scare you guys, but uh, it is just one thing to be aware of, to try your best not to look like you have a lot of money, basically. Third thing, straight from the locals, the most obvious rule, the rule that is hardest for me to follow as a content creator, which in local terms is don't give papaya, which means do not show your valuables, do not give them a reason, you know, to target you as the person they're going to rob. The most common thing that they go for is cell phones, especially iPhones, which is, you know, what happened in my particular case. So if you're going to have your phone out, be very careful of the environment that you're in, um, really don't take it out unless you really need to. If you're a content creator, of course, you know, it is just so much harder when you have to deal with cameras and taking pictures of everything. So in my case, I've actually been using uh, more my DJI Action and my Osmo Pocket, which are much smaller cameras. I would not recommend bringing a really fancy like $3,000 Sony with a great lens unless you really have an important reason that you need to do that and you have people protecting you. Some people do recommend carrying a, you know, dummy sort of phone, not your real phone if you have something really expensive. So if you do have an older model of a cell phone laying around, it might actually be a good idea to bring that instead. The fourth thing that I have been doing while I am here is separate your money into different compartments. I wouldn't really recommend having more than $100 on you at any given time. Like, make sure you have enough if you're in an emergency or something like that. But when you're out walking around in the city, I would also recommend putting your cash in a few different places. Like, let's say you keep, I don't know, $30, $40 in a wallet, then you can put I don't know, $20 in like some secret compartment of your bag. And then let's say you put like $50 or something in a money belt or in some hidden pocket actually physically on you. It's basically just a safeguard that if you do get robbed, you will still have some cash on you, you know, hopefully, and that what they take really isn't a lot. And as far as credit cards, like, of course, you can use them in restaurants, in the malls, uh, but I would recommend carrying one that maybe has 
a lower limit in a super safe space. And if you want it to be even more safe, just keep it, you know, in your hotel room and just take enough cash for the day. And in talking about how to stay safe when traveling, I would like to share with you guys one of the other things that I use no matter which destination that I am in, which is Surfshark VPN. They are the sponsor of today's video and an absolutely indispensable tool to staying safe online. For those of you who don't know, a VPN is a virtual private network, which basically encrypts your data. So no hackers are able to get into your information and you can send and receive files safely. So that is incredibly important when you are traveling and a lot of times using public Wi-Fi, whether you're at your hotel or in a cafe. What's also really cool is that you can change your location uh, from where you actually are. So it can allow you to access websites that might not be allowed in the country that you're in. I've actually had this been an issue multiple times when I've been traveling. Uh, certain websites just do not work in the country that I happen to be in. I've even had my bank give me issues in a few different countries. So it really is just a magical solution where I can change my location to, you know, Toronto, Canada and access all of my information as if I was there. What's also really cool is that you can change your streaming services by changing your location. So like with Netflix, you can access different libraries or Hulu or Disney Plus you have a lot more selection. So in sponsorship with Surfshark, I have a fantastic deal for you guys that will save you a lot of cash. If you use my code Alina, you will get 83% off of your plan as well as three months for free. I will have everything linked in the description and this is just a super important way to keep yourself safe when you are online, especially when you are traveling. Now my sixth tip is something that, uh, I don't personally really have to worry about that much, which is don't stay out late. I've actually become quite a grandma on this trip where I am literally going to bed at like nine, 10 o'clock and I'm not really a nightlife kind of person as is. So it has been really easy for me to just be in by six, seven o'clock before it gets too dark because unfortunately um, here in Colombia, that is when a lot of really bad things can start to happen. It is far more dangerous to be wandering around uh, really anywhere in Colombia at night um, than during the day. So if you are somebody who is going to be going to bars and nightclubs, like please take so many more precautions um, than you usually would. Ideally, always be with a group of people you trust and be very, very careful of the people that you might meet in bars and nightclubs. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details, but there's actually way more risks for men than women uh, that I've heard in the nightlife scene. There's some kind of very scary drug that they have here called Devil's Breath, uh, where basically you are still functioning, but you're not super coherent and uh, people can very easily manipulate you. And it has been super popular for lots of guys getting drugged by women in the nightlife scene. They take the ladies back, you know, to their hotels and then wake up in the morning with no memory of what happened and all their stuff is gone. So if you're like me, I would just say stay home, <laughs> but I know a lot of people like to, you know, go out when they travel. So if you do, please just take a lot of extra precautions because I think it is substantially um, more dangerous uh, to go out here than it is in many other cities. Moving on with our list, I believe we are on number seven, is to not go to isolated areas. You could say that this is the mistake that I made in my particular unfortunate case. I didn't think I was in an isolated area, but basically any area where you are not, you know, well versed in that you maybe didn't ask a local about. And if you are especially just by yourself, it is not a good idea. The most foolproof way to stay safe is really to be in the best possible area with a whole bunch of people, like ideally people, you know, but even just being in more 
crowded areas, the chances of something really violent happening goes way down. But of course, you then have to be careful of things like pickpocketing. Tip number eight is to use Uber or verified taxi cabs. If you are traveling to the larger cities in Colombia, you will have no issues with just calling an Uber. But keep in mind that if you are going to smaller sort of cities or more remote sort of areas, you will almost for sure have to use the regular taxi companies or have a private transportation lined up. You guys know me, like I love to walk. I'm a walker. I like to walk a city, but unfortunately uh, neighborhoods can change very fast here. Like you can go from one block being totally fine to another one being sketchy. So it really is just a good idea that unless you for sure know the area that you're going to be in and it's safe, just take an Uber from point A to point B. Now, number nine is to be careful of motorbike robberies. Basically what this means is that you will be walking along on the sidewalk, heaven forbid you have your phone out <laughs> and a motorbike will just like zoom past you and grab that right out of your hand. And this can even happen with things like purses, which you have to be so careful of where I actually watched this video uh, of an incident here in Medellin where a local was walking with a group of, you know, other people and two guys in a motorbike came by right on the side where she was walking on. And she was actually wearing a crossbody purse, which you would think is safer. But uh, sadly, what happened is they were able to grab, you know, the bag while still going at that super fast speed and she obviously went forward, you know, with the tug of the bag, they got the bag and she obviously went face first onto the asphalt. So that's just one thing to kind of watch out for, like maybe have your bag in front of you and maybe, you know, have your hand on it or in a way where somebody isn't able to just like quickly grab something as they are passing you. And number 10, a point that I think is very important no matter where you are traveling, and that is to pick the best accommodation that you can. This is especially true in Colombia, where there's such a big range in between neighborhoods, so you really wanna stay in the best and safest area that you can. Ideally, the hotel should have really good security and uh, have really good reviews that, you know, everybody who stayed here didn't have any kind of issues. So I really would suggest not skimping on uh, how much you pay for accommodation, make sure it is safe and make sure it's in a good area. And bonus tip, bonus tip, which is probably one of the most important things uh, that you can do if you're traveling to Colombia, if you have this opportunity, of course, and that is to get the help of a local. Of course, the ideal situation is that you have friends or family here in Colombia that can show you around because they really know these places better than anyone else. They can give you the best suggestions of where to go, when, the things to keep in mind. And of course, if you're with a local, the chances of something bad happening probably goes down quite a bit. Now, if you don't have that available, of course, you can do things like utilizing the concierge at your hotel or hostel. You can also join a local tour, especially here in the big cities like Medellin and Bogota. There's a lot of really fantastic like walking tours you can do. They're not that expensive and it really is a safer way to see the city. So that is it. That is it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this list and it was helpful to you. This is just a very general sort of list of, you know, the first things to keep in mind. Of course, there's even more concise tips that uh, locals might have for you. So if you have some good tips, please leave them in the comments for anybody who is thinking of coming to Colombia. Once again, a very big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. I would highly recommend a good VPN when you are traveling. So I will leave my discount code and the link in the description so you guys can get that fantastic deal. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining me on this crazy tour of Colombia. It has been, it has been an adventure. I would come back. I 100% would come back and I am looking forward to um, 
going to Brazil. So I hope you guys will tune in for the next video. And uh, until then, keep being your own kind of beautiful. Bye guys.